Welcome to Her Remarkable History. Remember, to support our channel, please subscribe. The Haunting Death Mask of Elizabeth I. One of the most influential and heroic queens to ever rule England was Elizabeth I, the Tudor monarch that her father, Henry VIII, would have been proud of. Elizabeth faced many challenges throughout her life, from questions about her strength, due to the fact she was a queen and not a king, to the threats from the Spanish Armada that she managed to see off and defeat. She would, throughout her reign, execute many people who she believed were religious dissenters, but she would also execute Mary, Queen of Scots, her cousin, who had plotted to bring about her death and downfall. But Elizabeth in her final months of life was a shadow of her former self. Portraits showed her standing strong and tall, and as if she had a hand on the world. But her final days were spent very differently. Following her death, she had a death mask cast of her face, which shows the haunting look of the Queen, who by the time she died was suffering greatly. But what is the story of her death mask? Elizabeth I reigned for around 45 years, and she was the final Tudor monarch, as she died without having a child. Her reign was a golden age in which writers such as Shakespeare were creating incredible works, and performing them in theatres around London. But during her final years, the Queen's health would deteriorate over time, and her close friends began to pass away. Some of her closest ladies that remained with her for decades were getting old and dying, and Elizabeth I would then fall into bouts of depression. In 1590, Blanche Parry, one of her closest ladies, died. And Blanche had known the Queen since she was a princess, and was even the chief gentlewoman of the Privy Chamber, and also the keeper of the Queen's jewels. Blanche's death upset Elizabeth greatly, but then in 1598, another one of her close friends, William Cecil, her trusted adviser, would also die. Cecil had backed the Queen for decades, and as she was losing her trusted friends, Elizabeth began to retreat and become more isolated. She drifted from the court that she once commanded and became distant to it. In her final years, she would also execute Robert Devereux, the Earl of Essex. Devereux was one of her favourites, but he had been charged with high treason after being involved in planning a rebellion, which included kidnapping the Queen. In January 1603, Elizabeth I was not very well at all. She was in a deep depression, and she retired to Richmond Palace, which she loved. She believed this was a good place for her to retire into her old age, and whilst at Richmond, in her final months, she remained with her loyal ladies. Elizabeth, whilst here, would turn down food and drink, and she lost a lot of weight, and her ladies became very worried about her. They asked doctors to come and examine but Elizabeth refused to allow them to see her. She would also be hit by the sorry news that another long-serving lady, Catherine Howard, the Countess of Nottingham, had died. She had served Elizabeth for around 45 years, and this seemed to really tip her over the edge. It was said that the Queen loved the Countess well, and hath much lamented her death, remaining ever since in a deep melancholy that she must seemeth be overtaken. She was very frail and was almost 70 years old, but she remained stubborn and in charge. However, she refused to rest at times and she stood for long periods. It was believed that she was, in thought, contending with her impending death. And in the final days of her life, she became rather contemplative and also rather guilt-ridden. She worried about the execution of Mary, Queen of Scots, and it was said she shed many tears and sigh, manifesting her innocence that she never gave consent to the death of that queen. She also began to be visited by ghostly visions of Mary, and it was clear that Elizabeth was dying. Her health was failing and her mind was also, and she would make the decision to retire to bed. She summoned the Archbishop of Canterbury to come to her side and to pray for her soul, and he told Elizabeth I that she would go to heaven and would be a queen in heaven. On the 24th of March 1603, the queen died, and her body was then taken from Richmond to Whitehall Palace, where it was watched over for three weeks. However, at some point following her death, a death mask was taken of the final Tudor queen. 
There were many questions that remained after her death, including the succession of the King of Scotland, invited to also rule England. However, a mould of her face was taken, and what is interesting is that it shows the Queen looking very different to the portraits that were painted throughout her life. It showed an ageing Queen, who hid behind the mask of youth, and the death mask of Queen Elizabeth I would later inspire the design of her tomb. She was shown with a pensive look, and the effigy which was made of her would also be complete with her ruff and jewels. It was common at the time for people to take death masks of high-profile people, and they were used to make funeral effigies in tombs, but also to act as a reminder of the person who died. Elizabeth I was shown looking rather old, and this would have been true to her final last moments. Today the tomb in Westminster Abbey that is based on her death mask is colossal, and it shows the Queen complete with a crown and headdress, and it does show her importance and riches. There are a number of possible illnesses or problems that could have killed Elizabeth I. It's believed that the Queen may have had blood poisoning, based on the lead makeup that Elizabeth wore to cover up the smallpox scars that she was so self-conscious of. Another illness proposed is that the Queen had cancer, or that she may have had an infection that turned to pneumonia and took the Queen as she would have been older and had a weaker immune system. The Queen was embalmed, and it would have been during this time that the death mask was made. Those who did this process, such as physicians, would have made the Queen look comfortable and relaxed in her death state, and this is how the death mask would have been cast. Today, Elizabeth I is buried in Westminster Abbey, and her body was first placed into a vault by her grandfather, King Henry VII. However, James I would order the creation of a huge monument and tomb, and she was interred inside of this, and in the same vault as her half-sister. Elizabeth, interestingly, was placed above Mary I, showing her importance over Mary in history. Her tomb reads, Consorts in realm and tomb, here we sleep, Elizabeth and Mary, sisters in hope of resurrection. Many people lamented her death, but there were others who had high expectations of the Stuart King, James I. But over time, this would wane, and within 15 years of her death, Elizabeth had a heroic reputation in society at the time. She was shown for being a brilliant queen who had done so much, from defeating the Spanish Armada to trying to unite religion, but her death mask is interesting, as it shows us a realistic image of the final Tudor queen who would control everything that was painted of her to make sure that she stayed young and looked incredibly powerful, even when this was not the case. Thank you for watching, and to support, please subscribe to Her Remarkable History. Thank you.